So, episode 50. And as promised, uh, we do a little uh, recap over the last uh, 49 episodes. Uh, basically 49 weeks of working on our project. Uh, yeah, uh, have a look at uh, to see how it was before and how it is now. Uh, also for people who are, have recently tuned in to, uh, to the channel, uh, convenient way to uh, you know get in the know instead of uh, having to struggle through uh, 25 hours of uh, Marius. Yeah, well, um, have fun. Um, next week uh, we're going to continue with the bathroom. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, going to break some walls, some uh, load-bearing walls. Exciting. Have fun. See you next time. So, and this was the property uh, as we bought it um, two years ago now. Big house built in 1700, 1800, a middle house built in 18, 1900, and a little garage somewhere in the mid 1900s, I would say. And next to it, the church with a little park. This is the back of the house, the garden. You're looking at the little house, which is a shed. Uh, this is the camping. We stayed on the camping for the first six months while we were doing up the little house to make it ready to live in. And this was the interior as we found it. Divided up in, uh, in two rooms, the big house that is. All these uh, walls are made out of drywall. This is another yeah, little compartment. And this is what is going to be the bathroom. It's a little annex built to the big house in the back. I don't know what they were using it for. There was an old toilet bowl that we removed. But this is the way it looked. Now I'm starting to remove all the drywall because I want to take that out. I don't trust it. It's, it's no good. I want to see the real walls. I want to render the re real walls. The real walls of the big house are really thick. They are well over a foot thick and that's where the insulation comes from. And that's my little sidekick Nadia. Taking down uh, the suspended ceiling. Also drywall plates. Yeah, a lot of rubbish came out of that house. I said no bones yet because uh, I've, I've always been thinking about what happens if we just find a skeleton in the garden. What would be the procedure? You know, would you just bring it to the tip secretly, hush hush, or would you just uh, go to the mayor or the police and have them excavate your yard uh, just as a uh, the official way but actually that is a good way you know maybe it's the best way because then we had you killed two birds with one stone yeah maybe we should just tell them anyway that we found some bones yeah we'll be like oh there's a skeleton over here and one over here and at least it was uh, there yesterday now it's all the dirt's back on top of it we think it's a meter and a half down that you should dig yeah uh, just to be sure do the whole garden and fell that tree while you're at it. Yeah, no problem. We don't mind if you do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's me pointing at this strange heap between the middle house and the small house. Could have been a collapsed uh, bread oven. It could have been a natural rock there. That would explain why the middle house was built with such a great uh, angle, strange angle to it. We had no clue at this point in time. We just had to get in there with uh, with an excavator really to assess what the problem was. So that's one of the three trees that we felt. Nadia is making the entrance to the cave more accessible, it was completely overgrown. And here we start the first time around with the mini digger, clearing the garden. I need to have some space to store stuff, to walk around. And we need to clear 
all the growth from the house to actually assess what we really have, what we have bought and also to, to make a plan for the renovation work. Nadia is digging here in that pile and luckily it's just rubble. See this is the garden the first time around cleared. Later we uh, rent the digger again and uh, do some more work. You see I'm standing two meter high there. Yeah this is the uh, bathroom. Well the annex built to the house where the bathroom is going to be. And here I'm walking through uh, over a path that we have cleared and later we will uh, we will clear a lot more. The soil is pretty high. You see a stump of a tree there that I had to dig out. I think later on we'll, uh, we'll go at least half a meter deeper. This is the little house. This is the shed that we were turned into the little house. This is how we got it. With an opening door and an open window. This wall is completely closed. We're gonna break that open and make a, a through way to the middle house. And yeah, this is where I'm actually uh, living right now. Unreal. See, this is where we are breaking through the wall and making uh, an opening from the little house to the middle house. This was a big job. This was the first time for me opening up a wall. Oh, All those uh, natural stones and uh, debris that came out of that wall are all reused. We have thrown nothing away. Now I'm starting to uh, make the dirt floor in the little house uh, sort of level because uh, we plan to uh, pour concrete here on the floor. And there the concrete goes and flows in. This is uh, the only time that we actually ordered concrete. It's really expensive here in France. But uh, this was a lot. I think we poured yeah, 700 liters of concrete in there. I'm not sure. I put plastic tarp on the, on the soil first. Then reinforcement uh, matting. Hold down with bits of tile. And then I... Uh, yeah, work the concrete in the corners and that is the concrete floor. Here I'm starting to fill up the gap where the door used to be. Because we didn't want to have a door there in the front. It would just take up too much space. You can see uh, new beams there for the first floor, for the mezzanine level or loft. Whatever you call it, I've put them in. And some planks. And that's me starting on the roof. It was just uh, tiles on slats and here I'm putting a, a moisture barrier in. Uh, there's a dimple in the roof that I wanted to retain because I thought it was quite characteristic. Uh, biggest mistake I've ever made on this house really. But at this time uh, I don't know that yet. I'll find out later. I'm cutting new beams, new rafters in the shape of the dimple so that the dimple stays but the roof is completely reinforced. I've doubled up most of the uh, existing rafters just to be sure that the roof is strong and will uh, keep up. That is me opening up the front side of the little house preparing for the installation of two windows. I put in a large oak lentil. As I'm working alone I always have to improvise and think of ways to be smart instead of strong, instead of breaking my back. So I'm hoisting up that bloody heavy beam, put it in place and then we are ready to cut open the wall even further, partially rebuild it and install windows. Yeah, this is me building uh, the wall in between the windows out of concrete blocks, reinforced, probably way too strong, but you know, better be strong than weak, huh? That's me installing the windows, two opening windows in the front and later uh, two opening windows in the back. 
In hindsight, I should have just rebuilt the whole wall. Actually, in hindsight, I should have just rebuilt the whole little house. That's the front of the little house, rebuilt with the windows installed, just before the rendering. Yeah, and here I'm going to start with my very, very first lime rendering job. E not easy. Steep learning curve. And as you can see, it doesn't always go well. See, see what I mean? That is gravity. There's nothing you can do about it. You really have to learn to live with that. Yeah, basically the problem was that uh, the render was too thick. The wall may be too dry because you have to wet it first and I was working in the sun. It uh, cured the lime too fast. Ah, you learn. This is the back of the house. Didn't film too much here because it was basically just a repetition of the front. Opening up, installing a lento, lento sorry, and installing opening windows. Ah, that was really nice because it let a lot of light in the little house. Insulating the roof, putting in uh, those, uh, those boards everywhere. And then starting with the, uh, the cladding, wood all around. And later we will paint the wood in white just to uh, give it a little bit more of a spacious look. Opening up the roof because uh, we're going to install a fire stove in the little house and the chimney goes to the roof there. We didn't want to have the chimney sticking from the side of the house or in the front of the house because uh, we didn't like it to be too visible. That's another steep learning curve installing a chimney. I've never ever worked with uh, wood stoves uh, before. Installing the electrics, keeping it simple. All the electrics run over the cable ends of the house and then uh, via the highest beam, all neatly in conduits. And after that's done, I can uh, finish uh, with the insulation on the cable ends. Install a little window frame and uh, close it all up and start painting. Yeah, some people have suggested uh, a shame that uh, that it's painted. They like the wood look, but you know, it's a French cottage. It's not a hunting lodge or a Finnish sauna. Yeah, we want to have everything white. The little house is only uh, 160 square feet. So it's small. We want to give the impression that it's uh, a large and spacious. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, spray paint everything. It's a special uh, high pressure, low volume spray painting machine. Not ideal. Marius did a, a second coat today. So he did the first coat yesterday and the second coat today. It's 37 degrees outside. He's doing this spray painting in the loft where it's probably actually hotter. Um, with a mask on that doesn't like siphon out the fumes, doesn't filter the fumes and he didn't eat properly so by the time we went for lunch he was had the full-on shakes and he was all pale. Anyway he's all good now he's doing just finished the second coat in the loft I think and uh, I'm gonna give him a hand doing uh, some brush painting on the ceiling. Fresh air. Well, and that is uh, the finished painted loft. Yeah, nice, all white. So we start rendering uh, the inner walls. This is a uh, a sukush, a uh, pre-coat an undercoat that I've used uh, a lot and over this undercoat will go a lime render 100% hydraulic lime this sukush just uh, isolates everything that's on the wall and 
gives it a clean look and the lime render really adheres really well to this uh, undercoat. Yeah, you slap it up with uh, with a trowel and then uh, form it with the trowel. Once it starts drying out, you just sponge it with a damp sponge trowel, and you basically mold everything in shape. It's really nice. Okay, electrics on the ground floor. Just keeping it simple, as simple as possible. I don't want to have any complications at this point in time in the little house. Actually, I want to keep all the electrics pretty pretty simple. Yeah, and to make the little house uh, weather tight, uh, we gotta install a door. And we gotta install a door frame. Actually, we gotta build a door frame because we bought a door, an old one. I'm refurbishing it completely, putting in new glass and painting it. And then I have to start building a door frame. I never really built a door frame myself, um, but it's pretty cool. And at this point in time, the door is in there for a year now and it's still working fine and the door frame hasn't really warped or worked in any way so i've done a pretty good job and i was pretty pleased with myself i can tell you i mean hanging a door is not easy building a door frame and hanging a door is uh, well even less easy yeah pretty stoked with myself And that's putting the door frame uh, in the opening you know, of the wall. Putting a threshold in. Yeah, later I'll have a lot more work with that threshold. Because I uh, built steps to the threshold. Because we're digging the garden even deeper. Ah, this is uh, finishing uh, Yeah, one of the walls in the little house on the ground floor. One of the walls is not rendered. It's uh, the wooden planks that I had. Why? Uh, just for the looks. Yeah, it's nice. It's it looks good. I'm happy with that decision. Happy that I didn't render it. Yeah, and uh, this is me installing Q board. It's uh, sort of an insulating board on the floor, the concrete floor. Um, makes the floor a little bit more even, insulates a bit and then on top of it I am installing electrical floor underfloor heating. We have the wood burner stove but I, uh, I do like a warm floor. Then uh, quickly we move on to tiling the floor and I'm quite in a rush here because the camping is going to close down for the winter, that was the 1st of November. And I had to fly out for work on the 1st of November. I really wanted to have the little house ready to live in. Also because uh, Nadia might return from her job earlier than I did. And she would have to live or be able to live in the little house by herself. Without me uh, tending to little bits of snacks here and there that you always have. Well, this is late September and uh, the camping is about to close and I am sort of ready to move into the little house. So I'm taking the mattress from the van. It's a king size mattress, a foot thick, it weighs 50 kilos. And it was a real nightmare for me to figure out how to get that up into the loft by myself. Well, without damaging it or making it dirty, dragging it over the wet damp soil in that walkway there yeah packing it up and hoisting it into the loft well i've succeeded i've done it the mattress is in the loft you see it's it's really i think yeah it's, it's really something like like a paint yeah and this was really a big problem it turned out that those tiles um, when fully dried showed up a number of uh, yellow marks yellow spots basically on all tiles when I laid them they were still damp 
when they dried out they, they showed these marks that uh, I couldn't get rid of. I've tried everything. The supplier of the tiles uh, wasn't really helpful, Was actually was not helpful at all. Yeah, I, uh, I was pretty desperate because I needed to have this house finished, ready to live in for Nadia and myself within a month's time at this point. So uh, I've decided to paint all the tiles uh, by color matching uh, paints and uh, yeah, working uh, the paint on the tile with a sponge and with a brush and uh, trying to uh, even out the colors, uh, masquerading the yellow marks. Ah, this is me installing the kitchen block. I removed the kitchen block from the camper van. Uh, we don't really need it in the camper van as we're not living in it anymore. This is me burning a wood stove for the first time in my life. Also a steep learning curve. The wood stove has been great, it uh, heats up the house really really quick. And it adds atmosphere. Decorating the little house, putting up curtains. There are linen bed sheets actually, old ones that we uh, found on a brocant market. I'm folding them and hanging them up, trying to uh, get a little bit of privacy from uh, the prying eyes of our neighbors who are always uh, interested to, to see uh, how the progress goes. Yeah, bringing uh, stuff into the house, decorating stuff that we found on brocant markets or in brocant shops. All antiques basically. We really want to create the look of an old French cottage. We, we, we like that classical look. Nice little table that I scored for not too much money. Yeah, and then uh, I'm going to install some rainwater drainage right before I'm off for four months working on a boat in Micronesia. I needed to keep that soil behind, uh, behind the house dry. This is me boarding up the house, making uh, it safe from predators, I mean animals. Uh, this was five months ago, no, 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 this is now, no, no, this is f six months, this is five months, this is the beginning, and this is now, no, this is not now, this was how it was uh, when I was finished with the house, which is now uh, basically almost a year ago. This uh, soil holds a lot of clay because it's really greasy, slippery and sticky. You really have to be careful where you walk. At, at this moment, I know we make progress because the container is being filled up slowly, but I don't see any progress somehow. I don't see it coming together yet, but uh, yeah, I, I, we got to just keep on going. Today is day two out of eight. So, uh, and she's getting some abuse, I tell you. Oops, sorry. Yeah, we basically started uh, the new year with uh, removing uh, 60 cubic meters of dirt out of the garden. We really needed to create space and the weather was not really helping. It was really wet, raining most of the time. Everything was mud. Oh. Horrible, 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 but it had to be done. We had to get rid of all that dirt. The garden was six feet higher than the floor in the house. Come on, mad boy. 12 o'clock, lunchtime. Yeah, and with all that dirt removed from the garden, we can uh, finally starting uh, to give it some shape. We have decided on uh, a terrace, basically. Well, two terraces, basically. So you got the uh, the floor, the ground level, that's uh, same with uh, the levels in the house. And then a um, terrace up where plants are going to grow and a top terrace where we have uh, well seats and uh, actually later the chicken coop is going to be installed there so that's me installing the drains the water collection from uh, well the roof the rainwater 
rainwater collection. This is a dry setup. I'm going to dig it in later. Um, a very important work because the back side of the garden was really really damp. It couldn't get rid of the moisture in the ground. Yeah, that's me actually working, working really hard. I had to move a lot of dirt to uh, dig in that uh, drain everywhere around the house and it was mud everywhere was mud you would sink knee deep in the mud if you weren't careful oh god what a lot of work that was but great i mean so happy that we have installed that now back on carpentry rough carpentry the garden terraces big job heavy job a lot of lifting a lot of dust but uh, yeah we're getting it in place slowly but surely the garden is uh, taking shape because the soil is so humid we decided to install a French drain a French drain basically collects moisture from the ground from the higher uh, situated uh, terraces and uh, evacuates it and this uh, should uh, prevent the garden from becoming too humid this was also a lot of muddy hard work but it's uh, eventually uh, installed and it is working it's draining yeah this was really not uh, the best uh, time uh, renovating the house uh, that I had it was just muddy and difficult didn't see much progress not not nice not nice I'm installing here the drain, lining the garden with root cloth and uh, filling uh, the drain, the, the gutter, the channel up with gravel. Ah, finally back to carpentry. Cable end of the house, I don't want to render it, I just want to yeah, install these planks like all the old farms have here in the surroundings, all the barns. I think it breaks it up pretty nice. Rendering up there wouldn't be easy anyway. And I had these planks left over from... Uh, from the house, the little house, the interior, the loft. So, uh, good use. Finally, back into carrying gravel. I think I have installed about seven cubic meters of gravel. That's seven times 1400 kilos. Partially carried into the garden uh, via wheelbarrow and later by hand in buckets. Yeah, with all that gravel uh, the garden becomes a nice place to work again you can walk around uh, without sinking knee deep in the mud painting oh yeah paint yeah it's some sort of a paint it uh, protects the wood from the garden against the moisture and termites and uh, all kinds of little critters that like to eat wood rendering the exterior part of the little house well the backside because that wasn't done yet this is again a primer coat. Oh yeah, that was a great job installing or building the stairs, the steps in the garden. Pouring concrete uh, and installing old stones that came out of the wall that we broke open. Rendering it all with uh, a mixture of uh, yeah, white cement and uh, lime and uh, yellow sand to give it a little bit of a warm look to it the idea is to uh, build stairs that look like uh, they've been there for centuries maybe out of uh, natural stone and build in uh, a lime mortar but at the same time they are very strong they're actually uh, well stronger than they would have been if they were built in real lime mortar the traditional way back into uh, garden works and this is uh, leveling the top terrace yeah installing uh, root cloth and in uh, depositing gravel I don't know how many bags I think five five bags up there 
Yeah, all carried up uh, with buckets because I couldn't get there with uh, with the wheelbarrow. But uh, yeah, the garden is really, really getting into shape right now. As uh, we had some uh, leaks in the roof, I uh, I needed to install a good waterproofing barrier, and that meant taking uh, all the tiles off. I think 800 or 900. I think 900 uh, equaling 800 kilos of tiles we had to remove and then install uh, a waterproofing barrier and install those tile slats again well new ones luckily uh, Nadia had holiday break so she could help me and this was a job I will never ever do again I've said it before no I will never do a roofing job again it's just not for me but I'm happy that it's done And uh, as Nadia and I don't have uh, children, we thought uh, we get some chickens instead. Uh, that's basically the same. A uh, little extension of the family. Three chickens at this time. Uh, the middle one would pass away later on. And uh, we have at this moment two chickens left who turned out to be roosters. So, yeah, no eggs for us. Hey Claude! Hey, bonjour! Bonjour! <laughs> she let John? <laughs> Claude's here, Claude on scene! <laughs> yeah, look, here we go, we got the professional on scene! So the professionnel! Look, he's got an actual suit, babe! You need one of those! <laughs> Too big. Too tall. Too big. Too big. Too large. No, perfect. Start working on the cellar, emptying it out. This uh, spider-infested dungeon. Horrible job, and for that uh, we called in the help of our friendly neighbor Claude. He wasn't afraid of spiders at all. Yeah, we cleared it all out. It was uh, it was gross that basement. Horrible, awful place to be. But uh, thanks to Claude, we got it all cleaned out, and uh, I could start work renovating it. Oh, what's that? Qu'est-ce que tu as là? Qu'est-ce que c'est? Un recouvert. De des années 40. 1940. Ils sont bons encore. Ouais, c'est bizarre. Yeah, with a cleaned out, uh, empty uh, basement, I could start working on the renovation of the walls. Here I'm slapping on uh, lime, lime render, as the walls uh, are built in a traditional way and they gotta evacuate moisture coming from the ground. A lime render is uh, really the way to go because a lime render will breathe, it will uh, help to get rid of the humidity in the walls. Uh, a normal cement, Portland cement, wouldn't do that. So uh, this is an important job basically because in the basement everything is going to come together. Electricity, plumbing, sewage. Um, I want to really turn this into a, uh, a nice space, a space where that's not too intimidating uh, to come. A place where you can work and uh, yeah, just a part of the house really. And then it's time to start working on the bathroom and for the bathroom we are going to take down the first floor of the extension of the addition to the house that little building in the back we want to create a uh, flat roof there with a roof terrace on top opening doors leading into the master bathroom situated in the big house and uh, for that we need to uh, start demolishing uh, the first floor taking down the roof taking down the walls and uh, start building a proper flat roof breaking down those uh, walls will give me uh, a lot of uh, stone and uh, lime mortar I could either uh, deposit of it, but I could also uh, reuse it. And I found a way to uh, reuse the lime mortar. What I do is I uh, sort of tumble it in the cement mixer and uh, sift it 
and then later mix it with white cement and water and it becomes uh, sort of uh, a mortar again a strong mortar and uh, a good looking mortar the colors uh, sort of match up with the buildings in uh, our neighborhood so I'm using all the natural stone that comes down and the mortar to build uh, a nice retaining wall slash seating area around the fire pit this is me uh, pouring down uh, the base the foundation of the fire pit a lot of uh, steel reinforcement drilled into the into the ground it's really a hard soil there almost uh, almost a rock and uh, that's going to be the base for the retaining wall slash fire pit seating area Yeah, I really uh, enjoy reusing everything that comes off the house by demolishing parts of it. And here I'm building an entrance to uh, the basement. The basement was open to the weather, leading to a very damp area in the basement. And here I am uh, building the sides to uh, the entrance, the new entrance of the basements and later we will install some uh, opening doors on it. All the materials I'm using here are all reused from the demolishing of the first floor of the bathroom building. I'm building the entrance doors to the cellar, to the basement. I'm building them out of plywood because it's uh, strong, easy to work with and it won't uh, work so much in humidity or uh, sunlight. Um, I do route in some grooves in order to give it the appearance that it's uh, built out of uh, planks, a more traditional look, makes it look better. But then uh, when you route uh, into uh, plywood, you expose the grain to uh, humidity. So I did treat it with uh, a polyester. Um, the paint used on it is uh, what they call Basque Rouge, which is uh, the color of our house, as stipulated by uh, the local council, really. So uh, we stick with that color. We like it as well. Um, yeah makes for a nice look uh, of the front of our house nice and tidy and the basement is uh, protected from the weather the wooden wall in the back of our garden is 1 meter 80 high 6 feet high it holds a lot of dirt in place and we want to use the soil on top of that as sort of a walking path onto the roof terrace, onto the flat roof. Some steps are going to be created there and there will be traffic walking over that soil up there. That's a lot of pressure on those planks, I don't trust those planks too much. And as I have a lot of stone and mortar uh, from the demolishing of the top of the bathroom building I decide I'm going to encapsulate this wooden wall with natural stones making it a lot stronger than it is now providing lateral support to the bathroom building wall yeah and that's basically a year's work in uh, a little bit less than 40 minutes a lot of details uh, omitted obviously otherwise it wouldn't fit in 40 minutes um, but uh, a general look of uh, what I've been up to, what's kept me off the streets. 
I hope uh, you enjoyed this episode and uh, looking forward to seeing you back in the next episode where we are going to continuing with the bathroom. Thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for liking, for commenting and for subscribing. Thank you very much for all the kind donations of coffee and see you guys next time.